Ladies and gentlemen, 2024 Mazda 3 Turbo, the carbon edition. This is the second highest from the top. This is not the Turbo Premium Plus, one below. Comes only in zircon sand metallic, which is actually the color that I wanted my CX-50 to be in. And we got terracotta interior, leatherette, AKA fake leather, not real leather. But we got this, uh, you know, fake suede inserts. And we're joined here by my buddy, Joe, who actually owned a Mazda 3 and a Mazda 3 Turbo in the past. So I'm gonna give you guys some first impressions as we head out here to Walmart, cause that's where uh, we like to hang out and spend most of our time. Getting these power seats adjusted. Now the things that we're missing from the top end Turbo Premium Plus, it's said that we don't have a wireless phone charger, but it looks like we do. We do not have a 360 cam. We do not have real leather. This is like, I guess it's trying to be sportier. So they have this Alcantara or, it's not even Alcantara, it's like... Textured cloth. <laughs> it's like felt or something. But uh, I dig it. It's sporty, it's cool. I like that the stitching matches the, uh, like the brown leather. Yeah. I love the terracotta leather seats. Like I got the same, when I was looking at my CX-50, the terracotta interior was more important to me than the color of the exterior. So I got polymetal gray with terracotta interior. And by the way, big thanks to Cardinale Way Mazda, which is where we're at right now, for loaning me this vehicle for review. So I'm gonna tell you how it drives. We're gonna test it on the canyons. We're gonna have fun with this. First impressions, these seats are definitely more comfortable than my CX-50, because the CX-50 is doing this whole like rugged thing and the seats are kind of flat. But I'm curious to hear your experience, because you, I mean, you drove, you owned the non-turbo version, then you upgraded to the turbo version, and then you got rid of that too. So walk me through that. Um, so these cars are good because, for me at least, because the materials and the quality of the experience is a little bit higher than something like, say, like your average Corolla or Toyota, right? Yeah, it feels way more premium, for sure. It, it was much more drastic when I had my Mazda 3 originally, because at the time they didn't have the new generation Civic. The new generation Civic did really step up interior quality. I think they lot. followed Mazda's lead Yeah. On that. So, at the time it was like, no comparison, way nicer. Now it's, you know, it's a little more even between Honda. I would say, but um, just like the NVH in the cabin and everything is very low, it gives you kind of like a premium experience for a lesser price than say like a Lexus or... Uh, I, think, I think what Mazda is doing really well is they're putting money where it makes the biggest impact in the driver experience. So what I mean by that is like this has torsion beam rear suspension, right? Is it the same chassis as the CX-30 and as the CX-50, which I mean, the CX-50 just stretched this out. But they're saving costs there, which would make you think that it's gonna suck, but they've tuned it in a way and they've, they've stiffened up the suspension such that you can kind of get away with it. I mean, when you push it nine or 10 tenths, you're definitely gonna notice it. But when you're driving around town, like people aren't getting a Mazda 3 Turbo to take to the track, right? Yeah. So when you're driving around town, getting it to drive well at three tenths or four tenths and have these nice materials on the interior, you know, the little details like the indicator sound or the infotainment being really nice to use with a good screen and good design. That to me seems like they have allocated their resources and money in a very intelligent and intentional way to punch way above its weight class at the price point. Because yeah, you, you can go more luxury, you can get you know, nicer, slightly nicer interior quality and better driving dynamics. But for most people in the target audience for this vehicle, based on how they're using it, they'd rather just save the money. When and they're not gonna notice a huge difference. Yeah, and Mazda's good about kind of focusing on the driving experience more than a lot of the other lower end brands. I'd say Honda's also really good. Like Mazda and Honda, to me, mm -hmm. tend to do a really good job. Mazda, but even the CUVs in particular, Honda more so with their smaller cars. But comparing to something like you know Hyundai or Kia or 
Yeah, Nissan. Even, even some Toyotas, like the lower end ones. Yeah. They're much more appliance focused, right? It's just like get to a, get from A to B with those. But with this, it's like if you enjoy driving, or it can even get you to enjoy driving to a degree. Because I used to own a Honda Civic for like six years, and then I had a Mazda three. I used to travel a lot for work, and I would be you know driving you know four hours one way, four hours back. And it was in a Mazda three that I started to actually appreciate kind of the experience of driving itself. Hell yeah, I, I love if, that. I don't know if it's because of Mazda, maybe. Maybe it's because of their design. But that's what kind of started my like enthusiast journey. So I, I kind of credit Mazda to that. They tend to do a good job with their inputs. Yeah. You know, like you go from something like a Corolla to something like this, it feels well, I haven't really driven this enough to comment on the steering, but I can say in my CX-50, like, the steering there is is really fantastic. I enjoy this, like, when I drive it, I'm like, damn, yeah, this is nice steering every time I drive it, you know? Which is not something you would expect for a, a little CUV, but they're focusing on the things that make it fun to drive, right? I always found it really effortless to drive on those long trips, um, and not in, like, the super loose steering kind of way, more just, like, it felt like I didn't really have to think too much with how I was giving my inputs to the car. So more natural, more like one-to-one. -one. Yeah, and like I know they, they, it was like a Savage Geese video where they talk about how they designed the braking in this car so where it doesn't feel like you're leaning this far forward when you're braking in it and stuff like, like little details like that that make the experience pretty nice. Yeah. After going to Japan too, I just have like so much more respect yeah. for the engineering and attention to detail within a lot of Japanese brands, whether it's Grand Seiko, you know, the watches to companies like Mazda with their vehicles. It's, uh... I would call this car the Seiko of, like, or this, this brand, this Mazda is, the Seiko of cars. I like that. Why do you, why do you say Seiko? Where it's like Citizen or Casio? <laughs> they have more of that style element, I think, that Seikos are kind of known for. Like, Citizens to me are much more like simple tool watch type things that are, that are very reasonable on the budget. But Seiko, mm. like, there's a whole scale of Seiko options you can get from the cheap to all the way like up to the Grand Seiko, right? And then yeah, I got both. I love my $150 chronograph, quartz chronograph. Like, love that watch. Got it when I was in med school. Also love the Grand Seiko I bought when I was in Japan recently. What are you rocking right now? <laughs> this is a Seiko Prospects. I don't know the, the numbering on it, but I got it because I had a pretty nice gold dial for the price. It's like a sub thousand dollar watch. Hell yeah. Do you want to show it up here so the viewers can see? Nice, nice, nice. I should have worn something interesting. I'm just rocking the Apple Watch right now. <laughs> yeah, I think Mazda does a great job. Um, yeah, they obviously don't have like the higher end of the Grand Seiko, right? They're, they're trying to go more premium with things like the CX-90 where they're doing double wishbone front suspension, nicer interior, nicer design. Um, like the the new powertrain as well with like the, you know, the inline six and the wet clutch and all that. This is like the Seiko Prospects. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, the sporty, not... like, we gotta get out there in the environment type of, type of line of cars. But they're very comfortable, they're refined enough that you don't feel like you need more. Of course, there's more out there if, if you want less NVH or better materials or more power and things like that. But this kind of covers most of what the average guy would probably want, the guy or girl, right? Like, I didn't feel myself wanting for more until the bug for like a sports car bit me. So you went from the non-turbo to the turbo. Was that purely because you wanted more power? Yeah. Okay, because you were you were feeling like the non-turbo was too slow, wasn't exciting enough, or what exactly prompted that? Yeah, I mean, this was before I had any kind of car enthusiast, like, knowledge or... Dude, kudos to you, because you went from not being a car enthusiast to, like, tracking your car within two years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, drove your, I drove his Supra on track, which is linked right up here. I love that. That's a very rapid progression. Yeah, uh, credit to Mazda for getting me a Toyota. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> but um, I don't know, like, the power difference is substantial. I don't know if you've driven a base. I haven't driven yet. the non-turbo. Um, that's definitely, like, more your average commuter car type of feel when you're driving it. This, the low-end torque is insane for the price, in my opinion, and for it not being an electric car. Yeah, this is the same powertrain that they use in the CX-30 Turbo Premium Plus that we were just driving 
as well as the CX50 Turbo Premium Plus that I own. So they're using the same powertrain um, across multiple, which makes sense, you know, for cost savings. And there's not a lot of cars anymore in, on the market that are this, right? Like everything's going hybrid or electric, um, CVT, something like that, right? The, this has a six-speed like transmission. It's not. It's but not it's phenomenal. a slush box, and it'd be so cool if they did a manual in this, man. I wouldn't call it a slush box. I think it's pretty reasonably responsive. Well, just a slush box in the sense that it's a torque converter. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the, the Supra has a slush box too, but it's like a great slush. Like the ZF 8 speed is a fantastic torque converter. Yeah. Um, You're not going to track this car, but for, for the person I was, when I owned it, no track experience, didn't grow up driving on back roads or anything. Uh, just traveling to work. I actually did use the paddle shifters on it sometimes, and for me, like average Joe. Oh no, this has no paddle shifters. No, <laughs> like I was reaching feature. for it. That's a premium feature, I guess. That's strange. They don't. I mean, they're trying to make this feel more sporty, and yet no paddles. I, mean, I can go here. That is funny. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Interesting. At least they have the direction right. It really bothers me when they have a manual shift mode here, and they go forward for for yeah. increasing and backwards for decreasing the gear. Here it's proper, so you go forward to decrease the gear. It's basically a sequential automatic. But, um, but why'd you get rid of the turbo? So I think it comes down to the gearing. To be honest with you, that's, that's the biggest reason why it wouldn't work on a track is there's no top end torque. It's all like low to mid end. So, yeah, I think I think the engine itself, so it's like the engine tuning, right, being very torquey down low and dying off near redline. It makes sense for, like, commuting, but when you're pushing it hard, it also makes sense more for a CUV than a sporty little hatchback, I'd say. Right. But, um, well, so more like, more like the engine tuning, or do you mean, like, the, the how long each gear is? Um, I would, I'm just thinking, like, where the torque comes into play, so I guess it's the engine tuning. Like if you're on, if you're trying to do some spirited driving, usually you want your power to kind of go all the way up through the rev range, right? But it just dies off, I would say about two thirds of the way through your RPMs. If this is anything like my, because this thing pulls down low. Yeah, this is anything like my CX50. Um, it'll even short shift itself when you're flooring it like 500 RPM before redline. I think the redline's around 6K. Because there's no incentive to go to redline. Exactly, because all the torque is down low anyway. Yeah. So why, you know, why keep going when you're just losing power? And to be fair, this engine was pulled from, I think, an SUV originally when they brought it into this, the three. So I guess they didn't really do much there because for commuters, that's what really matters, but. Yeah, I think the question then becomes like, based on the use case of this vehicle, how big of a problem is that? Because I think for a daily driving commuter, like what we're doing right now, you're in traffic, it's kind of a boring drive. Having a torquey engine is more usable, is more relevant right now. But when you do want to push it on the canyons, which we will be doing shortly, I have a feeling there is going to be a little bit more problematic. Yeah, I think so. Knowing what I know now, like again, when I was, when I owned the car, never really driven on back roads or anything like that so to me it felt great like it holds itself well in the corners but you're not going to get this car to rotate in any kind of meaningful way you know it's not like it's not really about that yeah it's also a front wheel drive based all wheel drive system uh, i mean i own an i own an integra type s now and a much more dynamic vehicle a, a right. much more expensive vehicle too right but that's a vehicle that's you know sort of set up to be a daily driver but you can also if you take on a back road you can you can do things with it yeah right? it, it is it's rotate you can it's it's yeah i guess we're kind of cap comparing apples to oranges but yeah it's, it's a much higher tier product it's uh it's not just, quite twice the price but it's you know 20 25k more ctr right in theory it's supposed to be forty five thousand. it's the same type of car yeah actually fifteen thousand more than this roughly or yeah. 13 or something it's it's completely different, and I wouldn't I would say this isn't even in the same conversation as those cars. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But they do kind of market it like this, you know, like Canyon Carver type of car. So 
Yeah, I think if you are the car enthusiast who really cares about driving dynamics and you have the budget, the CTR is going to make a lot more sense, it's right? Easy. Assuming you can get it at a reasonable price without yeah. markup. But this is probably for someone who cares, who doesn't want to push the car as hard, who doesn't care as much about the driving dynamics. They want a premium feeling interior and they want to feel like it's luxurious um, without breaking the bank. Now, the color on this carbon edition, I think the color works really well on something like the CX-50. I love the CX-50 in this uh, Zircon sand metallic with the terracotta leather interior. And I think the, the, the terracotta on the interior still works and with this you know, felt or whatever, I don't, I don't, it doesn't quite feel like regular Alcantara to me, but um, with this you know, fake suede Alcantara, whatever you want to call it, um, the interior I like, the exterior, I don't know, it, it's kind of trendy, but I don't think it works as well on this kind of vehicle. You know, we well, want know interesting colors for interesting cars, and Mazda's bringing the interesting cars, but like for the Miata, you got the the red, sole red crystal metallic, amazing color, but like, that's by far the best color for that vehicle. And then you disagree. have this, Zircon Sand, which doesn't really fit the Miata's character, and then a bunch of grays, whites, and blacks. The polymetal gray, I'll rep that till I die because both of the ones I had were in that color. It's a good color. That's the car. That's the color that my CX50 is in. Yeah. Um, I think it would look. I think this car would look better in the polymetal gray versus the Zircon Sand Metallic. The Zircon Sand is like a little bit more like rugged, and uh, I get it. Like it's a trendy thing right now. It's a great choice for Vegas because it just blends in with the, all the dust. All the dust that gets stuck to <laughs> your car every day. Like you can't even see it. Yeah. But now the red, the red is like their their hero color, and uh, probably one of the best reds out there. But what about some like interesting blues and interesting greens? Not the really dark blues, but like the blues that pop, like this Honda CRV. That's a cool blue. Okay, let's try that. They have a dark blue. Yeah, but like when it's too dark, you know, yeah. that pops. This is a car that would look weird in like that like light blue, like your GRE6 was. That's fair. I think the rear end is a little bit has a little bit of a bulbous shape to it that it's got like this like cool like almost seductive like thing going on like what is the design language they call it it's like Kodo or something yeah Kodo or something like that probably got very, that wrong very flow very flow oriented type of shape that yeah organic organic lines and designs not every color works on like I don't know yeah that color. blue would probably not work on this but give me like a a green like that maybe. give me something cool Yeah, try it out with some funky colors, you know? <laughs> anyway, my friends, this is first impressions with the 2024 Mazda 3 Turbo. We're gonna go have a great time out here at Walmart in Las Vegas. If you guys have any questions, comments, input on the Mazda 3 Turbo, leave them down below. We will be doing a few other videos reviewing this car such as you know, what it's like to live with for a week, um, as well as a canyon carving driving review. So subscribe so you don't miss those. Much love, my friends, and I'll see you all in the next one.